Okay, that seems to be all. Let's get started. Welcome to the session on how to build MIN applications with Azure Cosmos DB on Azure Kubernetes Service, or AKS. So, um, I know it's late. Let's keep up the energy for one more hour. We have a lot of things to cover, but very interesting ones. So, before we get started, let me introduce myself and my co-speaker here. My name is Georgia. I'm a Microsoft Technical Trainer. And my background before joining Microsoft, uh, although I have a, I'm very passionate about AI and machine learning, uh, my biggest background is on software development and solution architecture. So feel free to follow my blog, find me on Twitter and LinkedIn for any tech-related news. And here you can see some of my hobbies as well. You know, I love traveling, physical activity, have a little bit of a musical background. Um, and currently I work mostly with Azure uh, technologies. So giving it up, let's see Kostadinos here. Let's introduce yourself, please. Hello, I am Konstantinos Giazgios. I am a technical consultant in uh, Microsoft. I joined the uh, last three months. I am also a developer at heart. Um, and uh, 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 this presentation is my experience uh, working with Azure and uh, the main stack. I'm also a Thessaloniki.net uh, meetup co organizer with uh, Stratos, who's here in the front row and also dot, uh, the ng, ng uh, meetup, which is an Angular uh, meetup. Okay. So before we get started, I want to make sure you're aware we have a booth downstairs. So come join us for any questions and if there's any swag left over, of course. Okay, so it's a packed, so let get, it's a packed uh, agenda, so let's get started. So we'll talk a little bit about what Cosmos DB is, for those of you who are not familiar with it. Uh, and then we'll talk about mean stack deployment on Azure. We're going to talk also about the Azure Container Registry and how to use it together with the Azure Kubernetes service. And Kostadinos then will share some tips and tricks on working with all those services. So, as you are aware, um, the modern life is very app-centric, right? So we need an app for pretty much anything. It makes my, our lives easier. We have an app for this conference as well, right? Uh, so that brings us to a little bit of a virtual world, a world that's based on data, okay? So as a developer, this, this is a big challenge because now uh, relational databases don't cover all of our needs. We need real-time data from different sources and different technologies sometimes, right? And things are so fast-paced. So as apps have become mission critical, all that flexibility uh, has, to be, has to be translated into our apps and then to our app development. So we need to be fast in developing our applications uh, and managing changes and managing all this data volume. So if you're thinking about the cloud, um, you can take a look at Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, it's a cloud database developed on the cloud for the cloud, but it can be used by many technologies. So a little bit of its benefits, uh, we have guaranteed speeds at a global scale, so it's a global service. Uh, it's also mission critical ready, ready, so it has replication, high availability, uh, so our data are secure and our data are available for multiple regions around the world. Also, it's fully managed and cost-effective. That means that you create a few settings, uh, you upload your data, and then the service handles everything for you. And I'm gonna focus on how it is so useful when it comes to app development. So I'm sure you developers is the only thing that's you know, most interested to you, right? So one th main thing you need to know, it's a NoSQL database. That means you have the flexibility to have different schemas in each record. Um, it also integrates deeply with other Azure services or also services uh, on-premise in other clouds as long as they can see the internet, right? Uh, and the most interesting thing uh, regarding this database is, uh, that is important for developers is that there's no one way of accessing, right? Um, how is that possible? So it has five APIs. And depending on which API you choose, the item type that you save is different. So let's say you're coming from a relational background, right? Then you would choose the core SQL API. You'd have a JSON file, JSON documents inside the database, very flexible, no SQL schema, and you'll use a transact-like SQL language to do the queries. But let's say you are used to columnar formats. 
that's the Cassandra DB API. Let's say, let's say you want to use a graph in your applications. You'd use the Gremlin API. Let's say you're coming uh, from tables uh, format, right? Uh, like the Azure storage tables, uh, if you've heard of them. It's supported too, and I've saved my favorite for last, the MongoDB API. So you can treat the Azure Cosmos database similarly to what a MongoDB database. And Azure Kostadinus is going to show you uh, right after this is how you can use the same tools to access Cosmos DB database like a MongoDB. And the best thing about this is you don't need to limit your programming language. You can use any programming language. There are a lot of SDKs available to do that. And you can use your existing data layer to interact with this database. So a lot of flexibility, not changes. So if you want to migrate from an existing service, uh, that's great, very easily done without a lot of changes in your code. And there's also a change fit that makes it easy to track and manage all the changes happening in the database. So there are a lot of benefits working with it. So now uh, I'm going to pass it to Kostadinos. Uh, he'll show us a demo um, on a case uh, that a lot of us have worked with. You know, uh, it's a scenario you might have you, a lot of you might find very familiar. So Kostadinos, I'll give it up to you. Uh, thank you, Georgia, thank you for this uh, introduction to our topic. It was very um, informative and uh, gives me uh, the opportunity to start this, let's not say demo, just a uh, story, a case, let's say, to how to, to do this thing. Uh, let's say you, you have a, a team that works in a mean application, and I will come back to this in a, in a, in a bit. And uh, you know how to de develop this application. You, you have built the schema, the logic, the application, etc., etc. And uh, okay, uh, the boss come, comes or, and says, "Okay, we want to deploy this for a lot of people." And you are, now you are in trouble. You want to serve this, let's say, in in a, in a lot of uh, in a large audience. And uh, okay, now you have problems. Let's say, what are the resources of for people, machines, um, etc. Uh, you want to predict, let's say, how this application will, will, uh, will go with uh, traffic terms, but predicting the future, as you know, is very hard. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the other part is the security. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult thing to solve, always, uh, as, as uh, threads come, all, always more uh, sophisticated and uh, it's all... Uh, in all places. Okay, uh, here comes the Azure, can empower you to, to build this, this stuff and not to worry about predicting the future or uh, solving uh, things with resources, etc. Okay. Uh, one. Uh, first, uh, I can see, I can't see very clearly from here. Uh, how many of you know MongoDB, uh, the mean stack? Have you heard of it? Okay. Uh, Quite a few people. Okay, this is the, the acronym for, for the rest. Uh, the Mongo is the database. Uh, you store things there. It's a NoSQL database. Okay. Um, the Express.js is the backend, the backend, the service layer. Uh, you build your application with a JavaScript or, or better even TypeScript there. Angular for the front and uh, the node is the web server that, f that serves the, the whole thing. It's easy. It's, you can start and work in, uh, it's, a, it's a lean way to build things. Uh, that's why many developers uh, prefer this stack. Also, there's the MERN stack. Instead of uh, Angular, you can use uh, React. It's the same thing. Or Maven for Vue. Uh, you can use all, all these methodologies. It's, it's, it's all the same. Uh, okay, now you have the application. The next is to, to find, to, to talk about the containers and the second part of this, ex this uh, equation, how to take this thing and go to the Azure. First, the, the thing is to, to containerize this application. Let's say 
a simple definition here is that container is a way to virtualize your, your application with its dependencies and create a package out of it. Let's say that, that's a simple definition. It's not uh, definitive. It's just a way to communicate. Docker, of course, is the, 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 the champion here. Uh, okay. You, Azure comes here and uh, accelerates your containerized application development uh, by providing end-to-end -end security and isolation. Uh, it gives you uh, an, uh, a way to store these images, uh, registry, let's say the Azure uh, container registry that you can uh, deploy the containers there and share with the whole team. And also, it's uh, a way to uh, have many uh, different containers depending on the teams you have. Uh, provide an orchestration, you can uh, give some roles to these uh, containers. It's fully managed, you can scale as you want, scale up, scale down, manage the versioning, uh, the whole thing. The, comes with a great CI CD tooling, the Azure DevOps, that you, so you can uh, uh, run things uh, continuously, continuously. Uh, and also comes with this great support. You don't, you don't need to go all the time to Stack Overflow and, and search for things, but you can uh, study and uh, learn from the sources that come and the experts that uh, can, I'm not an expert on, <laughs> on these things, just a developer, but I always can uh, reach out and, uh, and learn. Okay. Oh. Now, uh, the second part of this, uh, the last part of this equation is the like Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes, the, the, the word comes from the Greek uh, word uh, Kubernetes, Helsman. And uh, it's a way, if you have this containerized application, a way to orchestrate. It comes from a project from uh, Google, I think, the, the whole solution. It's not the only way. There are other ways as well. Uh, I won't mention it now, now, but it's not the only player. And um, on Azure, there is a great support for this uh, technology uh, and, that, and Azure gives you a multi-layer security that's essential for uh, Kubernetes to work, to, 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 comp to, to break this thing in, in parts and uh, protect all things. And it uh, comes with the best practices. It, it uh, enforces the best practices because you can uh, do a lot of things wrong. Uh, building this stuff, okay. And also, if you need, uh, and probably you you will, for a large application, enterprise support. Okay. Uh, Kubernetes is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> what can get wrong, right? After the fifth. <laughs> Um, sometimes it's, you have to ask yourself if you, if you need it, of course. Okay, but I will come back to that later. But sometimes you can you cannot avoid it, right? Oh. Now, uh, it's easy, as I said. This is uh, these are the steps you need to, to take. You have the application. You need to connect to Cosmos DB. Uh, you need to dockerize the application, you need to upload it to ACR, etc. Et I, I will come back to these steps. Just, uh, I want to show you the whole journey from application to your uh, success, let's say. But here what, what I, want, I would like to, to say to you, that uh, you can take from here whatever you need. You don't need all whole stuff. You can uh, just uh, take the Mongo and uh, win, win a lot. The, the, the Cosmos DB as Mongo backend is, is a big win because you can scale this one, we can, you can use as a first step, or you can just use the containers and uh, deploy the application to your uh, on, on uh, premise or on uh, VMs, etc. Or you can go the whole uh, story in. Okay, but it's not all or nothing. 
but you can take uh, from here whatever you need. That's uh, I want to say that this is the whole journey, but there is a lot of things that you can uh, win along the way. Okay. Some of the prerequisites, if you want to download the code to play, you need, I, I did the development on uh, Windows. Uh, Windows have now a, a, a very a, a good uh, support on uh, with on Kuber containers and Kubernetes. You need, but f you need the latest uh, versions of of, of uh, Windows Windows Server or uh, Windows uh, 10 or 11. You need to uh, opt in the containers uh, feature, the w, uh, WSL2. You need to install the Docker, and the other, the other stuff you know as uh, mean <laughs> developers. It, it's just the stuff you need for uh, for the um, mean stack in order to. Now the application from uh, it's, it's a simple example, and it's it's on purpose because I I take an application come comes from uh, the MongoDB uh, community. It's a, and uh, I show you how you can, without changing almost nothing, to connect to uh, Azure Cosmos DB uh, with Mongo backend. Okay. Okay, I'll try to go to now um, on uh, hands-on mode. I will give you, give me some credit on that because I need to back, go back and forth. Okay, we'll go here. I, ha I, I have already downloaded the application and I can now start the client and the server. And here is an empty application. Okay, it's just a playlist. You can add the dev one, etc. Nothing fancy here. Just to show a case. Okay, something's not running, of course. Right. It helps if you start the server. Okay, now I am come to um, the tooling here, the compass. Mongo compass tooling that I can connect to, to MongoDB. Okay, there is this. Okay, I can go to my local database. And see the mean stack database. And here is the collection, etc. etc. Okay. Here is the starting point. Nothing fancy. Okay. Now I want to, to take the first step and go to, to the cloud. Of course, first you need the uh, can you see? I don't want to go to. Okay. Um, you can create a, a free Azure account, so you can uh, play around. You don't need uh, to spend a lot of, of money of things, but you can you can start with that. And we can create the uh, Cosmos DB. We'll go here. Now, as Costadino is prepared, let me say that the, you know, this account you'll have for 30 days is around $200. Uh, you can also open a student account if you're a university or a student, and you'll get some services for free for a year. So explore those free options, um, because in order to use the Azure Cosmos DB, you need uh, an active Azure account. Otherwise, there is an emulator available. Um, you could use if you don't want to spend that money. So you can experiment and work with it even though you don't have an active Azure account. Okay, uh, now I will uh, go to 
page. I will visit the Azure Cosmos DB uh, selection here. And I can go here, create a new database. I won't do that because it takes some time. Some time to, to create it. I just want to, to um, point out that you need to select Azure, Azure Cosmos DB API for Mongo in order this to work. And here we have the application. You have to go here to connection string and grab the connection string. Uh, I've already done this one. And I will go to the other application that I have here. I will kill the previous one. You have to go he here to end, uh, to end file and uh, and your uh, your own, uh, connection getting from the page from the Azure. Okay, start it. I need another one here. give you some time to, to, to work, to run. Essentially what happens is we're going to switch between the, the actual Mongo and the Cosmos uh, just by changing the connection string live. So give us a little bit of time. Okay, and now hopefully yeah. all things. Let's see. I should have. Give some time to start the server. This is the server. This is okay. No, this one is not the correct one. It's the yeah, the port is not right. Hopefully, yep, no. I think it's a port because I changed it, but okay, nevertheless. Uh, we'll connect from here. You can see that I can connect directly from uh, uh, the compass to the database, same way I did before. You see the trial that I made before. I think now it's just the port right. Uh, sure, then it's not a, okay now. Now I have the the, the data from the serv from the Mongo from the cloud, as you can see here. Yeah. It's just a port thing. Third time is a charm. Yeah. Again, uh, new developer, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And now I can go here to the Mongo database and see the second as well. Okay, so it's, it's that easy if you uh, have correct the ports from the <laughs> development. 
of course, but um, this is the first step of, of the journey. And um, I will com come back to the presentation. We are not done there yet. We have uh, 15 minutes or something. Ten. Ten. Okay. I will. I will go for that. I will. I will not dig very deep onto that. I will go. Uh, now this. Now we need to dockerize the application. Okay. Uh, we need to create a file. Uh, create the Docker from uh, the client, the server, and put that all together. Mm, let's go to code again. Uh, the error is to display that this is a real coding session, not just something that's ready already. <laughs> okay. And um, I have a Docker file here. You build the client, you build the server. And there, there are a lot of ways. This is just one of them. Of course, you can uh, sit down with your team and discuss how to build this. It's a, 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 just a demonstration of how it can be done. And then, uh, okay, I will stop the application here. That's where the node. And. Uh, uh, when you st um, you have done with that, you need to build the image. I won't do that because I will take some time. Build the image. Uh, the second step is to can you see or no? Okay. Uh, you there is a tool uh, the Azure client you need to install and so you can communicate with uh, the AZ code. Let's see. Okay. Easy. It's the only prerequisites, and you can you have to do a a z login so you can have access for this test. It's a way to to do things automatically as well. And the second, uh, uh, you have the Docker file. You build the image, you tag the file, and you push to the to the ACR. Okay, and I will go now to show you the ACR. Container registries here. Just select a, a connection. There's a prob uh, you have to. Um, it's it's a good practice. The container registry to be on the same location as the as the MongoDB, yeah. so you can avoid the uh, traffic between the regions in the same region. If it's West Europe, North Europe, um, US, etc., etc. And uh, you create the registries here, and you just push the image uh, there. And now you can go there and see your uh, repo and the image as well. Just uh, three steps. You build the Docker image, run the build, tag the image, upload to the container. It's now ready. Your team also can uh, grab it. It's a private uh, container, right? Uh, so it's safe, let's say. Secure. Okay. And this is for uh, the second part that you you have built the Docker and, and you have the Docker uh, image into on the container. And now the last part it's uh, to create your cluster, right? Uh, here you can go to Kubernetes uh, class services and um, you hit the create. Of course, all these things you can do also from a uh, command line. Uh, you re select your uh, resource group. It's a good idea to be on the same uh, resource group uh, as the uh, registry. And uh, um, there is also an option to select what registry is connected to this uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so you build the cluster. Next, and uh, application methods is important. And here you can add the container registry, as I said. 
okay, you ha this is take some time. You know, so you, you need uh, and uh, I, I, when uh, this is done, you have the cluster ready. You can uh, select the size you want, but you can ch you you could change the size as it goes. So it's dynamic. You don't need to predict. Start small and add things as as it goes. Um, okay, and go back to the presentation for the last part. So we will be on time. Since we have the cluster created, now we are ready to deploy the, um, the Docker as uh, our, our the Docker in, in there. Uh, we need to create this file. This is the magic here. And uh, that is the UML that uh, says uh, some metadata and uh, uh, it says, it specifies what, what, what you will deploy in this cluster. The cluster has some nodes. These nodes called from the, contain, from the Kubernetes as uh, called pods. Okay, and uh, you specify what you will ha you'll have in these pods. You can have one more, uh, depending on the role, okay? And uh, when you have that, uh, Azure has a very good template you can start. And uh, I, I have to warn you um, that is U, uh, U, UML and you have to um, be very careful for uh, tabs and spaces because uh, if you miss that issue, you, if you mess that, it will not work and you won't know why. <laughs> it's very frustrating. Yeah, it's, I don't know why we uh, lean on this uh, language because it's, uh, but okay, this is the, the industry now. When you have that, you can just run the Kubernetes, Kubernetes command line that comes from when you have installed the, the Docker and the uh, tools. Apply this SCR and you will have the, the container uh, cluster ready. But it won't work. Why? Because this is the container, this cluster is uh, sealed, it's isolated. You cannot access it. You have to create also um, a gateway and uh, uh, you have to decide if you, this is a public uh, gateway that anyone can access or it's a cluster that uh, you have something in front that communicates. This is a discussion that you have to do also with your team. Uh, and uh, when you run this one, I will go back to Kubernetes and you will see that I have the workloads from before because it also takes some time. And you have your um, um, pods ready. Give me a sec. Here. The mean deployment just by running this command and uh, it's ready to to do that after I will I will I won't do that now I will want to run the the proxy now the so I want to, I don't want to be public <laughs> because I don't want to be charged uh, and this is the, the whole process let's say uh, we'll come back to the presentation so we we'll be on time Okay, um, some, some, some tips here. It's that you have to size your application, right? Uh, I don't mean by, uh, uh, let's say, uh, load, but of the complexity. It's a very simple application. You don't need uh, complexity. You don't need many pods. You don't need to break things. And here, uh, why is the, the, this solution is very good? Because the main problem with the Docker is the state of the application. But here we have the Mongo, the Cosmos DB as a backend, and the, you have the, all the all, all the state there, and you can uh, scale the, sta the, the, the state, the database, not related to your uh, application. But if you have a Mongo DB 
board, let's say, you have to scale as well and take care of the states if you have some. But here it's uh, solved by, by default. So you have some complexity concerning the state of the application, the data, or how the data is, is uh, changed from uh, login and etc. Uh, edit, uh, inserts, etc. And uh, but you have to size the application right and decide what is the complexity and what you have to, how many pods you need. Do you need Kubernetes altogether or just an old Docker and uh, VM can do that? Uh, consider security, don't share secrets, try to use the tools that provide comes with uh, best practices and uh, store the, the keys in, sec in secret so you don't mess uh, or share around these secrets at all. You don't need to do that, so it's very secure. Create okay, different uh, accounts for um, developers, uh, develop team from the, because it's a rookie mistake to, to have your own uh, let's say, credentials and working uh, in, uh, in the team. Create a different account so you can uh, have a, a isolation between the developer team and the owner one. The Helm also is a tool that can Kubernetes that's very useful to build these uh, uh, files, the manifests okay, that uh, describe how these pods are, are uh, lined up. And uh, use the, also the UI you see you saw, to, um, to investigate, to see and, uh, and experiment with, uh, with some settings. But when you, you have uh, decide what you do, use the Azure DevOps automation. So you can do this uh, continuously. So you can uh, add more pods or change the application as, as it goes. This is, uh, of course, a topic of another <laughs> session. It's a, it's a lot of discussion. Okay, um, uh, that was uh, the main presentation from me. Uh, and uh, you can see many references here in the Microsoft Learn and uh, Microsoft Azure Resources. It's a great, jo a great book come, that comes from Microsoft that has hands-on and very deep uh, discuss each topic. I uh, would like to, to thank you, uh, Georgia, for helping me in the presentation, some stuff I and it, it's very experienced. She's very experienced. And uh, uh, thank you for uh, keep staying with us in that time. And also, if you want to code, uh, scan the QR code or visit aka.ms the uh, Athens 2022. And you can play around the service. Um, as we said, most of the tools you can find. And for Cosmos DB, there's an emulator. Or if you want to play straight with Azure, a free subscription. Any questions? I don't think we have a lot of time. Uh, so you can come on here or find us on the Microsoft booth and we can discuss anything uh, from what we've showed. Uh, we didn't have the time to expand a lot. So thank you so much for sticking around. Um, really appreciate it.